que tenés. Muy bien, y buenas noches, buenas noches. Está muy oscuro. Wow, it is really yeah. dark out there. Oh, I really yeah. need these lights now. Yeah, I have not yet adjusted to the, the you know, sun going down quite so quickly and it getting dark quite so fast. Halloween is usually that tipping point, you know, mm -hmm. where it mm -hmm. really starts to get dark very, very quickly. Um, so, okay, um, we are going to make sure we leave lots of time for questions folks might have. Um, I've listened to everybody with their, um, their, their little speeches. Most of them were really kind of fun. It was really good. Um, I want to do a little work based on that with um, just plain old some pronunciation practice for starters. Good, good plan. Just plain old, plain old. Because um, what I notice is that uh, a lot of times I could catch your verb phrases, but you know, we, we probably have some little pronunciation things we should work to clean up a little bit. So making sure that, por ejemplo, if you want to say me da miedo, me da miedo, it scares me, me da miedo, that it really comes out as miedo, miedo, yeah? It's that not miedo. You know, um, I'm going to put up a share screen for just a minute. Here's a reason why this is often an, an issue. And if you feel like you yourself are a little wobbly like this, um, you know, don't be terribly surprised because the fact is, where uh, what what should be set in stone for us, but often is not, uh, is making sure that that those vowels come out nice and clean, and we all need to work that a little bit. Um, and the reason that is often a problem is that there are so many words in Spanish that are only different by one letter, maybe two letters. And yet those one or two letters will cause confusion um, if, if you mess up the vowels. And I'm going to give you um, an example here with this whole thing of, uh, you know, a lot of folks wanted to use as an example, which is a great example to use, by the way. Me da, uh, me da miedo que or me da miedo cuando, okay? And this word miedo is what a lot of times you may think is coming out very clearly, but it will sound like this. It will sound like media. Look how close miedo and media are. It will come out mieda, and mieda is just not a thing. <laughs> it's gotta be miedo. <laughs> it's gotta be miedo. It's gotta be miedo. Heaven forbid, I have not heard, I'm going to congratulate all of you. I have not heard this word, which means shit. <laughs> Mierda. I haven't heard that one. So yay. All, I'm kid you not. Pat yourselves on the back. I, I say that kind of facetiously, but you know, you, you, you look at that and M-I-E, M-E-I, M-E-D, what, what? is it you know they are very 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 close in how they're spelled and so you know little things like that can trip us up um things like tristeza 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 is a long word so it's hard to pronounce tristeza um uh tristeza tristezo you know i so I, I often hear a little bit of uh, wobbling on those vowels. So I want us all to work on some kind of communal um, reading just to make sure we're working really hard with getting those vowels out uh, nice and clear. And, and don't feel self-conscious about it because, you know, honestly, that is a tough thing, even though, you know, I say from an instructor's point of view, it, it should be obvious, but it isn't always. And, and what we think we're saying and what we are really saying sometimes kind of, 
you know, spans that the ends like, mm, it's not quite hitting it. So um, um, I would like us uh, to do a little reading and um, I'm hoping, I, I haven't had as much of a chance to preview this, but I'm hoping it is gonna be an easy reading. Um, oh, thank you. And uh, you know, we're gonna just, you're gonna, just going to see it on your screen, but I would like people to kind of take turns and I'm gonna make it really super big print. Um, and I don't want you to try to go fast. <laughs> I don't, well, no, super big print because if you, you know, you're reading on a tablet, hey, I'm sorry. You know, if I put it in, in 10 or 11 font, you know, I don't want to see everybody on the screen doing this. That's, <laughs> you know, that's the nightmare. I mean, I would be doing that, right? So, okay. Uh, vamos a ver. Vamos a leer un poquito. And um, I'm going to read just the title. I don't want people to try to go super fast. I do want you to try to take your pauses in chunks. And I'll show you what I mean by that in logical chunks. So I'm gonna read the title, which is pretty darn long. And I'm gonna pause instead of just reading at normal speed. And, but I'm gonna pause in places that make sense and I'm gonna work really, really hard on my vowels, okay? So I'm gonna take this chunk because here's a logical chunk. Hundreds of lost pets. Okay. Cientos de mascotas perdidas. I don't want you to focus on rolling R's. Good. I want you to focus on, no, because somebody is going to understand you if you don't roll an R. I mean, honestly, I, they I really can. will. They yeah. will understand you, okay? But where you, where you can run into some issues is if those vowels don't come out nice and clear. So cientos de mascotas perdidas, hundreds of lost pets. En incendios en California. Incendios is the hard word in there. Una palabra larga. It's a long word. En incendios en California. In California fires. And then we've got a little semicolon there because they're separating a related but, you know, not attached idea yet grammatically. Uh, ooh, I'm going to take this because it talks about a feature of the mascotas uh, with an adjective. So this all groups together. Sus caritas peludas. Sus caritas. And caritas is just a diminutive of cara. Sus caritas peludas. Caritas are their little faces, oh. right? It would be like saying they're cute little faces, right? Anytime you see an ito or an ita, it makes it cute and little, something precious, okay? Sus caritas peludas, peludas, peluda, peludas, furry. Furry, okay? Sus caritas peludas le romperan will break your, your heart el corazón le romperán el corazón and that's a future it's not important that you know it's future le romperán el corazón el corazón corazón okay vale their cute furry little faces will break your heart well there was a picture and we don't have the picture but you get the idea okay so uh, we've got a nice uh, uh, short sentence here, a nice short sentence, I'm gonna underline it. Uh, ooh, and we'll highlight it too. Is there somebody who wants to be brave and give it a go? I mean, I, Karen, Karen, okay. Uh, los reportes llegan a cada segundo. Yeah, okay. Los reportes llegan a cada segundo. So the reports, 
arrive. Well, hmm, would we really say that in English? No, probably come on in. It has this idea of rolling in. The reports are coming in. Every second? Every second. Okay, vale. Ooh, and we've got, uh, we're going to pause it at the comma. Atigrados, atigrados, you don't know what it means. Oh, anybody want to take a guess on what that means? Gatos atigrados, you know atigrados is talking about what kind of gatos they are. Tigers? Tigers? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what word would we probably say for our tiger cat? Striped Meaning, tiger. There you go. Striped. So this is a way of saying striped or tabby. Uh, ah. ah, okay. Who wants to tackle just up to the, the comma? Again, Jen, Juanita. See, uh, gatos atigrados uh, uh, perdidos durante uno evacuación en el área de chalk hill chalk hill okay now the hard word there and this would be hard for a lot of people was evacuacion part of the reason we have a problem with that is that is it a co it is a cognate and your english brain no matter how hard you fight it is going to want to say evacuation yeah so the the typical thing now the good thing was you didn't do a shun <laughs> okay, but that word became so long, so multisyllabic, mm -hmm. that it was hard to carry that. So where it started to falter a little bit was right here in the middle. Es normal. That is really normal. So we want to break it down. Evacuación. Evacuación. I want everybody to try that word. Evacuación. Now, the typical mistake, and you did not make it, would be to say evacuation. People want to do the shush -sh because we say evacuation. They want to do it. And your mouth is going to want to do that no matter how hard, hard you try to fight it. So where you got a little bit muddled up with the, the, that qua, but that's because it's such a long word. So, you know, okay, evacuation, evacuation. It is always okay with these long words, which become tough, to really break it down in syllables. Evacuacion. Evacuacion. And just pause a little where you normally, you know, evacuation. You might do that in English as well. Okay. Um, and, and let's finish this up, Juanita. I'm going to let you finish up the last part, which just tells something about Chalk Hill. Mm -hmm. En el condado de so Sonoma, California. Yeah. Okay. okay. El condado. How would you say California in Spanish? I'm California. Old. California. California. Okay. And California was uh, actually the name for California was a name of a mythical place out of a novel. Mm -hmm. Uh, a mythical, wonderful wonderland, which when the explorers came to California and they said, what a great climate. Yeah. I read a great book about this, this kind of place. And this is just like that. We'll call it California. Go figure. So anyway, but here's a word that's kind of a, a neat word to know. Condado. Condado. And the first D we do more D, the second D we do a th, 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 so condado, condado. Condado is county. Okay. Here's the word for county in Sonoma County. Okay. So the reports are coming rolling in. Tabby cats, lost tabby cats during the evacuations. Okay. Oh. Now we've got a new sentence here. Ooh, you may need to choose where to pause. Anybody want to be brave? I'll do it. Okay, Susana. Okay. Uh, dos cabras amistosas, Jean-Claude y Spanky. Spanky. 
<laughs> que responden al llamado muchachos con un silbido al final. Okay, bien. And when you have an al, you don't want al, you want al. Al, al. 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 This is, this little tiny word, al, causes people a lot of problems. Thinking of es, an old boyfriend. Es muy, there you go. <laughs> es muy típico. This is a typical pronunciation hang-up. People oh. typically have that thing, al. Okay. Dos cabras amistosas. Amistosas is a word that develops a little bit out of amigo, kind of, or um, amistad. Amistad means friendship. So amistosas is friendly. 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 Cabras. Cabras. It's cabras. Goats. 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 Oh. Goats. If you ever hear the spooky Halloween oriented chupacabra mm -hmm. legend, chupacabra, goat sucker. Yeah, that's that old Mexican legend that there are, there's this horrible mythical animal which sucks the blood out of goats, sort of vampire-like, which is a great theme for Halloween week. Um, chupacabras, if you remember that chupacabras is, you know, sucking on the goats. Yeah, that's where that comes from. Chupacabras, chupa, chuparas to suck. Uh, dos, uh, dos cabras amistosas, two friendly goats. Jean-Claude y Spanky, que responden al llamado, who responds to the... Call. call muchachos so they come they come when you call hey boys muchachos ah, ah con un silbido al final silbido es oh. Oh. Eso. Eso. silbido silbido so silbido. just like all great words if you learn silbido means a whistle the thing that is a whistle silbido uh, silbar Es el verbo. Silbar is the verb. Uh, with a whistle at the end. Muchachos. Mm. Probably more like muchachos. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Bien. Okay. A ver. Uh, and some of these, they use some English because there is no good translation for border collie. Okay. So border collie is border collie. Okay. Quien quiere leer? Who wants to take a chat at this one? Patricia, quieres? Okay. okay. Un perro mezcla de border collie que aparece, let's see, aparecio. And that's a hard oh. word. Yeah. I'm oh, going to give it to you one more time and have you repeat. Apareció. Apareció. Bien. Okay. Hard to know where to break that one up. Sí. Apareció. Because you have to accent the end. So you apareció. have to punch the end and you can see it coming right at the end because of that accent mark, right? Okay. El 23 de octubre del, oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> oche, um, let's see, what was that? Oh, dice oche and el 18. Dice ocho and el departamento de servicio the animales del condado de Sonoma. Bien, okay. And now, apareció, I would expect that to be tough. Look at how many syllables. Apareció. And I would think the accent would be on the CI. That's what apareció. Ah, okay. but whenever you well, see an accent on the end, it's a past. I'm not gonna say whenever. Because it's an I-O, I-O, that is a past tense. Past tense, okay. That okay. is a dead giveaway for past, past, past. Apareció, apareció. Okay. okay, so and oddly enough, this is all gonna tie together with what we're doing later tonight. Okay. Un perro mezcla de border collie, so it's a mixed race dog. Mixed race dog, mixed border collie, a border collie mix. We would say the border collie mix. Que, uh, who, and we would say who, or that, right, that appeared, that showed up, that appeared. Now, here's the month that gives everybody a tough, tough time. 
Octubre. Octubre. I want everybody to try Octubre. 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 Your English brain wants to say October so badly. It just does. Octubre. 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 Octubre sounds great. Octubre. Octubre. Okay. Uh, del condado de Sonoma again. So the tough ones here are usually octubre because again, you've got a cognate that is interfering with what you should say. And just by pure habit, it gets mispronounced. And this one is the tough one because it's a long word with an accent at the end. And it's like, well, even though that punch is at the end, do I really put like some more stress someplace else there? Yeah. Uh, the, the infinitive it comes from is aparecer, aparecer. And probably you hear a little bit of, of punch also on the par part of aparecer. Apareció, apareció. So this border collie showed up, 23rd. Uh, okay, okay. Ooh, una frase muy corta, a really short sentence. Alguien, somebody. Okay. Oh, huh. I'll do that one. Ah, yay. Okay. <laughs> you'll, but you'll probably give me another one, but that's okay. No, I won't es, do that. Okay. Es una colección extraña de animales perdidos y encontrados. Perfecto. Perfecto, Federico. Muy bien. Vale, muy bien. Es una colección and you did colección. You did not do colección. Na, no shun, shun, shun. Muy bien. Colección extraña, a strange. An odd, a strange. A strange collection of lost and found animals. And here is a great example of two past participles that are nothing to do with a verb phrase. Adjective. Perdidos describes what kind of animals they are, lost. Encontrados describes what kind of animals they are, found, lost and found. A strange mix of lost and found animals. And here you've got that, that confusing thing we studied. These came from verbs, from perder and from encontrar, but we've made them into past participles to describe states of the animals. The animals aren't losing anything. They're not finding anything. They're in the state of being lost or in the state of being found, okay? Um, ooh, esto es difícil. Anybody want to be really brave? This has to be broken into chunks if you do it. I'll do it. Again. Okay, vale, Susana. Ellos son solo una fracción de los que han sido separados de sus propietarios por el incendio de Quinquede. Quinquede. El, Quinquede, uh, el cual se desata en el norte de California. OK. Excelente. And the tough words there uh, were uh, 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 proprietarios, proprietarios, bien, sí. Um, okay, uh, proprietarios, and then we've got incendio. So let's look at what messes uh, us up here. What really messes us up with propietarios and incendio, we've got a lot of vowel combinations. When we have two vowels sitting right next to each other, yeah, uh, the IE, the IE, propietarios, propietarios, incendio, uh, or, or well, here it's not an IE, but it's a, an IO, right? IE here, propietarios proprietarios. And again, it's a long word. It's a double vowel word. And here we've got another double vowel thing, incendio. Okay, incendio muy común. Incendio is a really common word. It's talking about fires, right? 
if you hear incendiary devices, you know it's a device that goes boom and sets something on fire, right? Okay. Um, ellos son uh, solo una fracción. They are only a, and that word means what you think, they are only a fraction of los que, those which. And when they say those which, they're talking about animales. The animals. Los que refers back to the sentence ahead of it. Uh, the ones that. Uh, los que, los que means the ones that, or those which, and that refers back to this idea of animales. Uh, they are only a fraction of the ones that, or those that, han sido, have been, I don't expect you to know that, han sido separados, have been separated separated from their owners. 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 Propietarios yeah. is related to our word of property. Right. And here it really indicates owners. They're owners. And now we're telling what, what happened to separate them from their owners. Por, by. Separated from their owners by something, by or on account of or because of, because of the fire. 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 We would say the Kincaid fire. fire. Right. Uh, we can't say Kincaid fire. It has to be here's one of the they words where it's a they, and this they is, is using a noun, Kincaid, to describe the fire. The Kincaid fire, uh, el cual se desata, and desata is a more uh, challenging verb, desata, which broke out. Okay. Uh, atar is to tie things together, desatar is to break things apart. So when we use that as a reflexive, it becomes which broke out. In el norte de California, in northern. California. Okay, un poquito más. We're just going to finish to the end of this paragraph before we start up with other things. Marilyn, um, can I ask you a quick question? Sí, sí, sí. Dime, claro. Why did they put L before cual? They, ah, el cual. El cual. I'm going to un. I'm going to ditch the underlining here and show you something here. Es buena pregunta. That's actually a very good question. Um, when you see el que or la que or los que or el cual, these are all little connector phrases. They connect a little clause. Okay. And I will tell you right up front, uh, both of these, are more commonly heard or more commonly used in writing than in conversational speech. Um, los que refers back to a noun from the previous sentence. Mm -hmm. um, you could have said this sentence with the los que in it as Ellos son solo una fracción de, oh, you couldn't say it without los que, of those, we, it, it's, it's, it's attaching an extra clause, okay, to the sentence. They are only a fraction could stand as a sentence by itself, although it would be really truncated because you'd say, you'd be left saying a fraction of what? Mm -hmm. A fraction of those who've been separated. So it attaches that extra information, and the los que refers back to animales. The el cual also refers back to something. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Those who've been separated by their owners, and now by the Kincaid fire, which broke out. And this which refers back to incendio. Now, the reason we need, a, a lot of times when we attach a clause, all you need is a little word que. 
Mm. Quite often, quite often, all you need is a little word K. Or if they're human beings, you might use Kien or Kienis, maybe. Okay. Although for people, we use K also. El cual is used here just to really specifically say, I am formally looking back at this masculine noun I used mm -hmm. ahead of okay. this. So you don't hear el cual so much in conversational speech. You might in a formal speech, somebody speaking at a podium or on TV, but not so much in conversational speech. They might have expressed that por el incendio de Kincaid, que se desata. And usually just que, but el cual, that which, the one that broke out. Okay. Thank you. It's a kind of more formal structure. And we got this because we have nouns in various parts we've referred to previously. We're referring to previously mentioned nouns. And to really tag it, K doesn't tag it specifically. It doesn't tell you masculine or feminine, singular or plural. Los K mm. tells you masculine and more than one. Oh, I'm referring back to this noun, animales, masculine plural. And el cual, oh, I'm looking back at this noun, incendio, fire. And so I'm saying very specifically, it's the noun, the one that's masculine and just one versus the one that's masculine, but more than one. So we're using these phrases, el cual or los que, to, to uh, because I've got lots of nouns I'm juggling. I'm, I'm referring back to nouns in the previous part of the sentence and I'm kind of juggling, well, which one are you talking about? So, so you say, oh, that one, which, which that one? You're talking about fires, you're talking about, yeah, animals. Buena pregunta, question. So Marilyn, where, where you say, um, por, por el incendio, could you use por qué? No. And tell, explain why. Nobody, I okay. Boy, I bet I don't um, know. Okay. You know porque, all one word, smashed together, right? Porque as because. Yeah. Uh, estoy explicando porque ustedes necesitan más información. Estoy explicando porque ustedes necesitan más e explicación. That's a good use of porque. I'm explaining because you need more information. But when I want to say because of, on account of, mm. I often can just plug in that word por, but not porque. Mm. Where we might say because of the fire, I can't plug in the English word because. Um, there are a couple things I could plug in, but the easiest one is just por. Uh, Por is one of those uses of the word por to say, uh, to say on account of or because of. Mm -hmm. And that's and, just what they use. And Marilyn, going back to what you were saying, the los que, the el qual. Mm -hmm. So this is a higher level of reading than like Dick and Jane. And another way to do it would be to have two different sentences. Exactly. So not referring that to That is exactly anything. right. Yeah. So, in, in, uh, so here's how somebody might break this down if they were just chit-chatting with you. Uh, ellos son sola una fracción de los otros animales separados de sus dueños. Dueños would be owners also. Mm. Uh, y el incendio, el incendio de Kincaid uh, separó a los mascotas de sus dueños. So normally chit-chatting, somebody might split those into two sentences, right? Oh, 
Y el incendio empezó en el condado uh, de Sonoma. And it started in Sonoma County. So somebody might split those into all little short sentences, but quite often we tie all this information together. And once I start to tie it together, I need all these little connectors like los que and el cual, or just often the little word que might connect a new idea. And por actually connects a new idea, por el incendio, because of the fire. Por el incendio de Kincaid. So all these little words tend to start to connect other ideas into longer sentences. Mm. Um, okay. Bien, bien. Uh, anybody who wants to tackle that last one or do you want me to tackle it? Yo, 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 me? I'll try it. Okay. Um, where are we starting? El incendio? Uh, oh, perdón. Aquí. Uh, el breve. incendio. Wow, it's short. <laughs> el incendio ya ha provocado apagones <laughs> eléctricos mm. generales. Muy bien. Okay. Vale. Uh, and let's take a look at that word apagones. Apagones is like, oh, shoot, what is that? Well, it looks like apagar. Apagar is to turn off. So we know it actually comes from ooh, apagar, to turn off, but it's not <laughs> acting as a verb. So it's acting as a noun. So it means a turn off. And on, O-N, makes it something big. Big and ugly, big and bad. A big bad turnoff. What might this mean? Okay, a big bad turnoff, a big bad turnoff. Let's keep that in mind. When you see on stuck on to the end, it makes it big and bad <laughs> or big and ugly. Okay. Uh, el incendio ya provocado. The fire has provoked. provoked. Has caused it to be turned off? It has. And what would we call an apagón? Apagones eléctricos generales. Blackout. Ah. It turned off the big electric, a general big electrical turnoff. We call that a blackout. So an apagón is shutting it all down and in a not good way. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, bien. También ha obligado, también ha obligado a más de uh -uh, 200 mil. Uh -huh. 200 mil. 200 mil. 200 mil personas a huir, a huir Leave, run, flee. A huir de sus hogares. To flee there. And hogares is a higher level word than casa. Hogar is a great word for you to know because hogar has more feeling in it than casa. Hogar means a home. Whereas a casa is a house. Or we could say, voy a casa, I'm going home. But hogar is your home and hearth. It's the body and soul of your house. It's not just a house, it's your home. Well, we're basically saying that there are 200,000 people are told to get ready to evacuate. Mm -hmm. Okay. As uh, 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 de sus hogares, so it has caused that many people to flee their homes. A veces sin previo aviso. A veces, sometimes, a veces, sin, without. Sin previo aviso, without. Previous warning. Any warning. Advanced, with, advanced when warning. Any, without any advance warning. Without any previous warning, without any advance warning. Ah, esto ha causado 
que cientos de gatos, perros y caballos y otros animales queden atrás, queden atrás. Esto ha causado, this, meaning the whole situation, this has caused, caused that something has, is happening, that hundreds of cats, cats, cats dogs, and dogs, and horses, and other horses, animals, they're all up there. Yeah, queden atrás. Left behind. Are left behind. And that kitten is a subjunctive. So that says maybe left behind. The kitten then tells you it's maybe not necessarily, but they're probably being left behind. Atrás is always behind. Okay. Está bien? Está bien? Uh, so watch out. Um, I'm going to put up our, our little whiteboard and leave this as a kind of uh, a last uh, thought point. Quite often where English speakers will have a sp a special problems are when we combine vowels like this. Okay. Whenever we've got two vowels together in Spanish, unless there's an accent mark that puts more stress on one or the other, if they're just there with no accent mark, your goal is to try to combine those two sounds as if they were fluidly one. So E and E together are IE, IE, IE. U and E together are not U, E, U, E, but U, E, U, E. Yeah. All right. I and O like incendio, incendio, yo, 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 yo. Right. And I and A, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't, you don't punch one vowel more than the other. You try to blend them. Okay. Um, so, ie, ie will sound like that, but if I put it into, if I put the ie in with an accent mark, it'll become comiéndolo. If I see an accent mark now, instead of putting ie together as one fluid sound, I'm going to punch that e sound more than the e sound, comiéndolo. Right? Comiendo, 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 eating, comiendo, but comien, comiéndolo, comiéndolo. I punch the E more. So when the E, E are together, try to blend them. Only if you see an accent mark like that, do you want to punch one sound more than another? Okay, so this is farmacia, 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 right? Uh, there's no accent mark on that. So we combine the ya, 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 ya at the end, farmacia, all right? But, uh, but this with an accent mark is libreria, libreria. Farmacia, libreria. So be on the lookout for things like that. Or listening for things like that. It, it takes a while to actually think in those accent marks, but you know, that's okay. Bien. Ah, vale. Okay. Está bien? We good? Bueno, okay. Vamos a practicar un poquito uh, con el grupo entero. El gru grupo entero. Y vamos a practicar un poquito con uh, cosas como, como uh, me da o me parece. 
Uh, and I'm going to ask you this as a conversational question, as a conversational question. Uh, por ejemplo, si yo les digo, uh, ¿cómo, te uh, ¿cómo te parece esta película? Es una película famosa, ¿no? Sí, ¿Cómo sí. te parece? How does it seem to you? And what I'm really asking is not like some long explanation, ¿cómo te parece? What I'm asking is, what do you think about? What do you think about this? You know, if we're thinking, if we're thinking about what are our choice, what are our viewing choices? We're going to have a pandemic movie mm. night. Ah. <laughs> and what are our choices? Ah, como te parece Patton? Como te parece Patton? And they don't want you to really go into a long, involved explanation of blah, 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 blah. Como te parece Patton? What do you think? No, I don't. I don't like this. Ah. Ah, me da alegría. Me da alegría. Makes me happy. Me da alegría. Oh, ¿cómo, ¿cómo te parece? Fish called Wanda. ¿Cómo te parece? Ah, me, no, no me parece muy bien. Es, no, no quiero ver una comedia. No quiero ver una comedia esta noche, ¿verdad? ¿Ok? O, oh, ¿cómo te parece, cómo te parece una, una película de acción? Una película de acción. Not an action movie. We, we plug our day in. ¿Cómo te parece una película de acción? O, ¿cómo te parece una película de comedia? Bien. O, ¿cómo te parece una película de música? Ah, me encanta. Ah, te encanta. Te encanta a... Uh, una película romántica. ¿Cómo te parece una película romántica con música? Ah, a mí no me fascinan las películas musicales. A mí no me fascinan las películas musicales. Ok, vale. Oh, ¿cómo te parece? ¿Cómo oh. te parece una película Ah, China. Una película china. Una película de fantasía. Sí, sí. me gustó mucho. Ah, mucho. Me es buena mucho. película. Sí, sí. Es buena película. Es una, es una película que, que ofrece una combinación de una combinación de romance, del romance, una combinación de acción. Y de fantasía, sí. de fantasía. Y, ok, a ver. O quizás quieren hablar de, de libros. ¿Cómo te parece este libro? What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Ah, me gusta mucho. Ah, sí, sí. ¿te, gusta, ¿te gusta el autor de este libro? Mm. Uh, Sean Connery, sí. Oh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Uh, la película. Ah, sí, es actor en la película de este libro, claro, sí. Sean Connery, que es un, un actor escocés, fenomenal, fenomenal, realmente. Bien, ok. Es, es, una, es, es un libro de romance. No, 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 no. 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 Es... Político, político es un yeah. político claro. y, y um, sí. intrigue. I don't know how you say oh, intrigue. Um, de espías es, es realmente un, no. un libro de es, espionaje, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, sí. Hasta cierto punto es un libro de espionaje, 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 espionaje. 
realmente. O quizás prefieren a cómo, cómo les parece este libro que se llama Team of Rivals. Es un libro de... Política. Política. De política y también de... Historia. 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 Es un libro de historia. No es novela. No es novela. No es ficción. No es ciencia ficción. Es un libro de, de historia. Ah, es una biografía. Ah, o oh, la biografía de, de mucha gente, de los miembros del gabinete de, de Lincoln, ¿verdad? Sí, okay. se dice non-fiction. Ah, que no es ficción. No. <risa> No fiction. De, de, de historia, de, okay. de I la vida know. real. Sí. O oh, si, estás, si estás con, uh, con una amiga en, uh, comprando ropa, ah, ¿cómo, ¿cómo te parece esta blusa? ¿Cómo te parece este blusa? Esta blusa, ¿cómo te parece? What do you think about this? Sí. Y tu amiga te ah, no me parece muy bien, me parece un poquito grande, me parece, ah, no, me, no me gustan las rayas, no me gustan las rayas. I don't like, no me gustan I, las rayas. Oh, oh, yes. oh, <laughs> oh, también. Oh, ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te parece una falda así? Oh, me gusta porque tiene muchos colores. Sí. Y así, ah, ah, así, ¿ok? Bien. ¿Entienden? ¿Verdad? Ok. A ver, uh, hay más preguntas de dar o de parecer o algo así. Anything there? Most of you did pretty well with your little descriptions. Sí, no, nada más, nothing else. Ok. Um, we're going to move on a little bit. There are a lot of verbs, and you will see these verbs like gustar again pop up from time to time because they just do. Um, what I do want to focus on a little bit tonight is this idea of reading in the past. And I'll be giving you something to read in the past. And a lot of you in, in the movie segments you've had, whether you're looking at Just Destinos or at um, El Tiempo Entre Costuras, you're hearing a lot of past, aren't you? Now, El Tiempo Entre Costuras is, of course, goes faster and that's harder for you to catch all of it. But even, even in Destinos, There's a lot of past starting to pop up, pop up, pop up. And so often we do talk in the past. It's very difficult to avoid it. But of course, with Spanish, we've got this difficult situation because we've got two past tenses, you know, and, and more really, you know, we've got present perfect. We've got acabar de, we've got all this stuff. They all talk about the past, but the hardest hump to get over is just number one, that preterite has so many irregulars, so it's a tough verb form to use. And we've got to figure out imperfect versus preterite. Oh, shoot, it's almost impossible to tell any story without those two tenses. You can't really work around it. It's going to happen. So let's break it down to just the very, very biggest picture. If somebody is talking about what happened in the past and they shift between pretérito and imperfecto, why are they probably doing that? Why would they want to use imperfecto? Would they be talking about describing something versus an event? If they're using imperfecto, They are probably doing that because they're in a description of what was going on. Either a description of a person or a thing in the past. Not he is tall, dark, and handsome, but he 
mm. was. was. Yeah. And we can't use preterite for that because being tall, dark, and handsome is not an event. Oh, <laughs> it's, sure how it he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just how he was. So imperfecto is always going to be a description or saying something was happening and it was going on for quite a long time. Mm. So certain verbs lend themselves much more easily to imperfecto, like tener. A lot of times if you want to say somebody had three kids, well, if they had three kids, unless you're talking about when she gave birth, tener preterito, if you just want to say, well, they had three kids, you're going to use that in, in imperfecto because you're describing their family situation, the number of people in their family, okay? Uh, versus the other big picture question is, why would I be using preterito? To say what? An event, An event. it was done. Yeah, something that yeah. happened once. And it happened, it happened, it happened, it oh. happened, okay? She said, he said, that's just, Bah, it came out of their mouths. They said it. He told me, she told me. That's not a, you know, necessarily going on a long period of time. It's probably he said, she said, he told me, she told me. Okay. We told them, I told you. Okay. So, right. Generally, it's that dichotomy of description versus, um, Events. Okay, so we want to keep in mind whenever we hear people talking or read here, uh, we want to keep in mind. Um, ah, I didn't want to do that. Why do this? Uh, we want to keep in mind. Oops, those those basic endings that are like which ones are preterite. And here are verbs that are preterite. These endings are preterite. Sometimes you're going to see an accent mark. Not all the time. But for yo and for el e a usted, you're going to often hear accent marks, right? AR verbs get e, aste, o, amos. You don't have to worry about the vosotros so much. And aron, right? But e and i are verbs will share the same endings. And they'll get e, iste, yo. And notice that o oh gets a punch and io gets a punch, okay? Uh, imos, istes, and ieron. Okay, so there are your basic, regular, if they're vanilla flavor, they follow all the rules, kind of endings, right? Here are your basic endings for imperfecto. Imperfecto is much more straightforward because imperfecto only has three irregulars in the whole language. So things are going to follow the rules the vast majority of the time, right? AR verbs are going to have lots of ah, 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 ah sounds in them, right? Aba, aba, saba. And yo and el e usted share the same conjugations in imperfecto, which is nice. Because it's one less conjugation to memorize. Aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, aban. Okay. ER and IR verbs are all going to get the ia, 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 ia endings, okay? So, uh, ia, ias, ia, again, yo and el e usted share forms. Iamos, iais, iam. Okay. So, there are your uh, imperfecto uh, endings. And these are new ones we're adding into your repertoire. These are the new, more recent ones, right? This is presente perfecto, which also talks about the past. But the reason it's called present perfect to talk about the past means, well, I'm really using the present of haber. The reason it's present perfect is that haber is in present tense. And English does the same thing. This goes back to the old, old roots in Latin. This goes back to structure in Latin. 
be it English or Spanish or French or what have you, okay? Uh, Latin did this a long time ago and it has pulled itself into many other languages. So, he hablado, I have spoken, and it's kind of like not super far back in the past. It's something I have done and may repeat again. Don't know, it's something I have done, but it's probably not like years and years ago. It's fairly recent, okay? He hablado con, he hablado. Ya he hablado con ellos. I've already spoken with them. And you get the idea of, oh, you just did that, okay? Has hablado, ha hablado. Hemos hablado. Uh, a veces you won't hear except if you're in Spain. And han hablado. So all we do is conjugate haber every single time. E, as, a, hemos, han. And then we combine it with one of these ado or ido words. And it's always ado and ido. I don't make things feminine. I don't make things plural. Because these two things have to come together to make a compound tense. Okay, that means we've got two words, verbi words working together and they can't be separated. They work together to express the idea. And English does the same thing. I have spoken, she has spoken. You can't just say she, well, you could just say she has if it's understood, right? Oh, she has. But what you mean is she has spoken. Right, so those two verbs work together. Um, we're going to work a little more, however, with this imperfecto and the preterito, those two together, because you're hearing them now a lot in the movie segments that you've been doing every week. Uh, and it's important to start to kind of, uh, you know, revisit that, pull it together, and see why they're important. And what they should do is these two tenses of if we separate it out into just preterito and imperfecto, they should paint a picture in your brain. They should paint a picture of boom, 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 or oh, something that really is very fuzzy around the edges, not with a clear cut beginning and end. Okay. Um, we're going to take a look at, you know, sometimes you have clue words. And when I say clue words, I mean um, words that uh, are kind of like time stamps or time markers. Okay. And this is off a, a bigger page, but it's, it's a very long page. Uh, so again, credit we use for actions. They're done. They're over. They're very clear cut. Okay. Uh, it answers the question, what happened? A lot of people like to phrase it as it moves the story forward. It moves the action forward. Saying he was tall, dark, and handsome doesn't move the story forward. It just shows me what the guy looked like. Okay. Pregunta. Si, si, dime. If you said when he was 25, he was tall, dark, and handsome, mm -hmm. are you still imperfecto? Even You're though you still imperfecto. Okay. Because look, what has been done? Nothing. He was description. When he was young. How long was that? I don't know. When he was young. Anything that says when he was young, even if it says he was 25, which I know you may think, oh, that's kind of definite. Yeah. Anything referring to age, anything referring to age is going to be imperfecto. Whether it's vague, young, old, middle aged whether it's he was 25, when he was 25. 
things that refer back to age use imperfecto. The only time you will use preterito when talking about age is if you express this. En marzo, en marzo, cumplí 60 años. In March, I turned 60. If somebody wants to say, I turned 60 years old, and they use cumplir to say, I had my birthday. I had my birthday is done in preterito. And that's about it. Everything else that refers to age is going to be imperfecto, imperfecto, imperfecto. Era joven, he was young. Era viejo, he was old. Tenía, he had, tenía 25 años. Cuando tenía 25, mi esposo cuando tenía 25 años, tenía mucho pelo. <laughs> <laughs> Ahora, no tanto. No, not so much. <laughs> okay. And even though you say, well, wow, he was 25, it's still a kind of a, it's a description of what he was like at 25. It's still a description. But if I want to say he turned 25 on this day, he had a birthday, then that's an event. Everything else is going to be description. Es buena pregunta. It's a good question. So let's take a look at some uh, other things. They're going to give us some scenarios because you'll be reading about some of these and you'll be hearing this as you go more through your, your movies. Uh, past actions that happened once or stated number of times. So if I say he visited that office three times, that's considered preterite. If I say he visited the office a lot, not anymore, not preterite. Three times though is very definite. Five times is very definite, but a lot is not definite. It just means a lot. A lot is imperfecto. Five times is pretérito. Okay. Uh, beginnings and ends in the past. So it started to rain. Oh, it stopped raining. Those are pretérito. A chain of events or action in the past. So what we mean by that is a sequence of events. To say he arrived at the office, he unlocked the door, he went in, and he looked at his messages. Those are all preterito, one after the other, because they move the action. Part. You can picture in your head. He walks up to the door, he puts the key in the lock, he walks inside, and he picks up all of his messages that were left for him. They are definite events that happen one after the other. Those kinds of things will all be preterito, okay? You will sometimes get time cues, time stamps to help you with that, but not all the time. And if you don't get those time stamps, know that people using preterite means that they may as well have given you a time stamp, even if they didn't do it. So we've got here examples like Juan compró, Juan compró el lava, uh, una lavadora ayer, una lavadora ayer, Juan compró. Now, so here's where that pronunciation starts to become super important. Not just that you get, but you don't say compro, I'm buying right now, but compró. Mm. Mm. It's really important to punch that O oh, at the end so that people know you mean, oh, he did it. Juan compró una lavadora ayer. He bought a washing machine yesterday. And ayer technically tells you preterito, but even if I left off that word ayer, compró tells you, well, it's over. Not he was buying it and not, oh, he was buying it and he was thinking about it, no. Compró, he bought it. Okay, el año pasado estuve enfermo dos veces. Uh, uh, last year he was sick twice. Well, they're saying he just had two episodes. 
okay, yeah, you would need preterito there because you're really enumerating how many times he got ill the whole year. Viví diez años en Perú. Now here's the difference. Viví diez años en Perú must have preterito. I lived 10 years in Peru. And now you know that that ended at the end of that chunk of time we call diez años. Somebody may just say to you, vivía en Peru. Vivía en Peru uses imperfecto. Why? Because I used to live in Peru, but I'm not telling you how long. Right? So if I'm just saying I used to live there, vivía en Chicago, uh, vivía en Chicago. I used to live in Chicago, but I'm not telling you how many years. Bibi, 11 años en Chicago. Now I've got to have it as Bibi because I'm telling you 11 años. So if, if I am, if I am uh, uh, defining that, that action with a beginning and an end, then I need uh, preterito. Uh, here is something that is much, much more common. Uh, la película empezó a las diez. Movie started at 10. Well, it started then. That's pretty much a really short activity. And once it started, well, <laughs> it's done, right? Uh, se acabó a la, uh, se acabó a las doce. It ended at, it finished up at, Midnight, right? At, at uh, 12. Okay. Uh, ayer, Laura se levantó a las 7 de, de la mañana, luego se duchó, desayunó, se vistió, y se fue a hacer la compra. So here we have a really definite, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Se levantó, se duchó, she got up, she showered. Desayunó, ate breakfast, se vistió, got dressed, se fue, took off, took off to do something, took off to go shopping. Okay? Se fue, she went off. But imperfecto, uh, we've got ongoing actions, things that set the stage, things that were going on. So really the best way for you to think of it is if, if you would describe it as well, gee, he was telling me about that yesterday. If what you really mean is he was telling, then you're going to take decir and use imperfecto, decía. Me decía todo. He was telling me everything. If you mean he was doing it, if that's in the back of your mind, what you mean, he was doing it, or he used to do it, it's imperfecto or if it's description. Description, was doing, used to do, imperfecto, okay? And they kind of break it apart into separate things like descriptions, like habitual actions. That just means things that repeated over and over again and you don't know how often. That means used to. Habitual means used to. Um, Time frames, when they say that, they mean uh, talking about age or saying it was 10 o'clock. When we talk about um, it was a certain time in the past, it seems like that should be preterito, but it, they use imperfecto for that. So if I would say, wow, it was 8 o'clock when he got back from his hike, it'll be eran las Ocho. Eran las ocho. It was eight o'clock. Mm. And it, that is the one out of all this big, big batch of things about imperfecto and preterito. That one is the stinker. Because don't you think if you're saying it was eight o'clock, that that's pretty much in the past and pretty much done. And we're not going back to eight o'clock yesterday. It's over. It's done. But when you talk about when you talk about it was a time in the past, they just use preterito. It's just a rule they've got. 
Uh, and ongoing actions that are background. Okay, so let's look at examples because the examples help you more than just reading a bunch of rules. Nuestra casa era grande y tenía tres plantas. Our house was big, it had three floors. That's just a description of what it was like. There was no action, nobody's doing anything. The house was this way. Plantas is floors? Plantas is floors. Uh, you could say pisos. You could use the word pisos. Uh, planta, prime, uh, yeah, planta is often used for, uh, planta can also mean a plant. Plant, right? I was thinking I said three it can plants. Be planta. but, yeah, it can. <laughs> but planta is often used for levels of floors, like when uh, a building has many, many floors. They might use the word piso, P-I-S-O, piso. They might, but plantas, okay? Uh, okay, de niño. And here's a, an absolute giveaway. Anytime anybody starts out with a de niño, they're saying as a kid. As a kid. And you can bet your bottom dollar, if you're talking about that de niño as a little kid, they're gonna be reminiscing about what you used to do. <laughs> okay, de niño mi padre trabajaba en una fábrica. As a kid, and they translate here as during my childhood. They mean as a kid. As a kid, my dad used to work in a factory. Okay. Uh, todos los días volvía tarde. Every day he came back, he returned late. Okay. Todos los días is a dead giveaway, but you could even drop todos los días and just saying volvía, tell somebody he used to come home late. We could drop todos los días, and you would still get that because of that verb, get that idea of rolling of he would come home late. Okay. Era el año uh, 2005, and it was, I know, this doesn't seem like it should be imperfecto, but we're talking about a time stamp, just like a time on your watch, uh, only on a calendar in this case. Uh, cuando empecé la carrera, it was this year, that'll be because it's talking about time, and don't get too hung up on that example, but empecé la carrera, I started my um, degree, carrera, they mean really studying for your degree there. So if you started something, it's preterito, right? But here's the classic. Here's the classic, because this is how we, we talk. If you talk about your life, your parents' life, your husband's life, your wife's uh, background, your, your friend, whoever, whomever it may be. Cuando tenía 20 años, when I was 20, when he was, cuando teníamos 20 años, when we used to be this age, tener with años is always imperfecto, end of story. It's never anything else. Cuando tenía 20 años, tuve un accidente de coche. Oh, I had an accident. Now there, that, by the nature of I had, and you don't mean I had an accident every day. You mean this thing happened, right? Tuve un accidente mean I got into it. It means I got into an accident. Okay. And cuando tenía 20 años is just describing what your general age was. But tuve un accidente, there is something that moves the story forward. This event happened, boom, car crash. Está bien? Wait a minute, I'm sorry, Marilyn. So tuve then is preterite? Tuve there is preterite. Preterite, okay. It's one of those. Tuve doesn't happen very often in preterite. Tenia, what do you hear more? When people are talking, you're, you are going to hear tenia way more. If I had to put a percentage on it, you'd probably hear tenia or some form of tenia 70% of the time, maybe even 80% of the time. And you're going to hear tuve or tuvo, much less, okay. much less. Because tuve would mean I had this thing happen to me. Um, 
I, or por ejemplo, I could say, um, oh, mi vecina, my neighbor, mi vecina, mi, mi vecina uh, tuvo un, un bebé. Mi vecina tuvo un bebé. My neighbor had a baby, meaning she birthed it. Hmm. I'm not talking about, oh, she had a boy and a girl. That's tenía. Tenía un, una hija y un hijo. Okay. Tenía dos hijos. She had two kids. Just describing in general the size of her family, tenía. But tuve, tuve un hijo. She had a son. She had a baby. She birthed that child. So tener en pretérito, it more has the idea of you got something, you acquired something through birth, through, birth, through in this case, they talked about an accident in a car. Okay. In that other accident, we had um, that in the share screen, and I'll still got the share screen up, but had an accident, tuve un accidente, that this was an event that happened to you. You're going to hear tenía a lot more than you hear tuve or tuvo or tuviste. Um, okay. Um, and I am going, oh, wow. Son las siete y media. We're up at uh, 7.30. So uh, I'm going to assign this to reads that you see these uh, together. And I want you to, um, when you get to this segment, see if you can do this box segment where they've got an English translation. See if you can figure out what we will, how we will need to express these. Sometimes you're going to have specific time cues, sometimes maybe not. So uh, this will be exercise one. Okay. I want you to see if you can figure that out. Don't read the analysis yet or the solutions yet. And then do exercise two. Try not to cheat and look ahead because it is going to give you answers. It's going to give you answers. But see if you can figure out. And this will give you, you know, the feedback right away. But see if you can isolate it first before you kind of do the cheat sheet thing and look back for answers. Okay. I'm going to give you that uh, to work. I'm also going to give you... Um, uh, I'm going to give you this, which is just going to drill just the forms, not deciding imperfect or preterite, but just, just forms. So that's just straight out, you know, grammar stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get a nice choose one or the other. A 40 question quiz where you choose one or the other, imperfect or preterite, yeah? yeah? So actually the order you should do this in, the proper order will be this one first, and I'll put it in the email in this order. This where you just decide conjugations because that gets your feet wet, that's dipping your toe in the water, yeah? Uh, next, whoops, whoops. Next, I want you to see if you can do some of this oh, translation, right? And then you're going to get, um, whoops, a nice 40 question thing where you decide one or the other. And so 40, that'll be quite a few in a row, right? And that'll be training wheels off because you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to have a description to scroll up or down to. Yeah. And once you choose one or the other, it's uh, going to tell you right away whether you're right or wrong. It'll give you feedback right away. Make sense? See? It's logical. And I want you to kind of uh, check through that and then notice when you go through the next episode of one, either Destinos, if you're doing just Destinos, or the two movies, start to notice how often people are using Preterito or Imperfecto. Okay, and we'll have some listening practice with that next week. Does that sound sufficient? 
Do you want an extra reading as well, or is that too much? That's enough. That's enough. Yeah, okay. That's enough. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, the you know the the movies take a while. Yeah. The movie segments take a while yeah. to absorb that. But you, I want you to notice, and you may even want to go back maybe one episode or two episodes of Destinos and start to listen for when are they using preterite and when are, go back and listen a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you any reading. Go back and listen a little bit for preterite and imperfect because the best way to really get it is to hear a lot of examples. You know, she'll talk about how, oh, I called somebody Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we got to this place. Or she might be describing Arturo to her mom who thinks, oh, this guy sounds like such a catch, right? Mm -hmm. And she'll say, oh, he was really nice. And she's like, oh. Wait, is more? this <laughs> me or did they move really fast in that relationship? Because it seemed last week she met him, this week they're holding hands. He's got his <laughs> arm around her. And I thought, oh my goodness. Yeah, dinner for well, um, was it fast? <laughs> yes, it was fast. But do remember, that actually, in real life, yeah, let men do not let grass grow under their feet. Oh. Okay. If That's I may, if I may be so much as to put that stereotype out there, <laughs> yes. When I, when I had no gray hairs and was, you know, it was not unusual for some guy you have a drink with a guy and he's like come down to my parents place in Malaga I just met you we've been having a drink for 20 minutes it's fine just come <laughs> just come for the weekend come for the weekend I've only been talking with you for 20 minutes I am not going to your parents house in Malaga oh there'll be other people there yeah right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not always that unusual. <laughs> Let me just say it that way. It's not always that unusual. Uh, more so if you're young, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just saying that. But yeah. Well, it moves it along because yes, but it's also for dramatic reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. For dramatic reasons. Yeah, it moves along pretty quickly. Well, anyway, but it's kind of fun. So, okay, está bien. Está bien. Perfecto. Okay, so I think the good thing is for you, you know, uh, uh, kind of dig your way through some of those uh, examples where you get some feedback and then go back to the movies and listen back one or two episodes and pick that apart a little bit and listen for that flow of talking in the past. Okay. Okay. Vale. Eso es suficiente. I think that is sufficient. So the hardest thing is, you know, you really want to expect to hear people talking in the present all the time, but sadly, people don't always do that. <laughs> you know, because they talk about what they just did or what they did. You know, they're describing their situation to you, talk about several years back. So, you know, people throw this stuff at you all the time. Or you're coming, looking for an event you know, you come como turista, as a tourist, you've got your information, you're looking for a meeting. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está el salón número 45? ¿Hay una reunión? Is there a meeting in there? Ah, ya se acabó. Ya se acabó. It's already it's done. Done. It's already over. Oh. So People will mix, mix, mix all those tenses all the time on you. So best be prepared for at least some of it. <laughs> Get to practice sometime, right? Okay. Uh, we'll end up.